Hey Blenderheads, this is Meshweaver. In this video, I'm going to be going over 16 uh, very useful modeling tools that I personally use very often while modeling. Uh, this video is going to be split up into two parts. Uh, part 1 covering the more basic tools such as grab, rotate, scale, extrude, create face, delete, loop cut, and subdivide. And uh, part two, we'll be going over some slightly more advanced ones, though not that much more advanced. Uh, tools such as split, uh, duplicate, recalculate normals, select connected, aka the L key, mirror, invert selection, stuff like that. So yeah, I'm also proceeding a bit differently in this tutorial, since uh, each tool will have its own little part like with a little intro frame and stuff like that. So I'm recording each tool uh, individually so that I don't have to restart the entire thing if I want to change one thing. So yeah, let's get started. So in this part we're going to be going over grab. Now grab is one of the, uh, well I call it the core trio because the three first functions that we're going to be going over, grab, rotate, and scale, are really maybe the most basic and important tools that you can use because they really allow you to manipulate your scene in almost any way. Yeah, excuse me. So grab is activated by G. Now let me just hide these, which I'll be talking about later, so don't ask what the keyboard shortcut is yet. <laughs> so grab is activated by G. Now, at first glance, grab is pretty simple. You press G and you just move it wherever you want. However, you have to rotate your viewport around to actually move it where you want. And right now it's too low, and now it's too close, and now it's just too high again, but now it's too far this way, and yes, it's it's a bit tough to try and get it right where you want it just by pressing G which is why you can actually limit where you're moving it or which direction so you have these three axes here X Y and Z for red green and blue RGB and the x-axis is red so let's move it along the x-axis now if you have this 3d manipulator activated you can actually just click this arrow and just move it along the x-axis and the y-axis and the z-axis but if you want to do that using the keyboard shortcuts press G to activate grab then press X Y or Z to lock it onto a specific axis so you can basically move it over here then move it over here without actually moving it up because earlier if you had tried to do that it would end it up like here, but it's too high and still too close. So this gives you a lot more control over what you're actually trying to do. Now there's also two other sides to this. Uh, you can also move the object along its local x-axis. Now say I just do something here, like this. Say you end up with your cube facing like this for some reason. And you want to move it like this way. But instead of moving it by hand, which would be a bit of a pain like earlier, you can actually move it along the local x-axis. Because right now, this cube, uh, its x-axis, its own x-axis, is right where this red line is. Its y is on the green and its z is on the blue. So if you rotate this around, this face is still its local x face. So right now its x-axis is this way. So if you press G, X for global X, and then X again for local X, you can now move it along this line. If you press G, Y, Y, get the same thing. Z, Z for local Z, same thing. So it's really helpful to be able to choose what kind of axis you want to move. Now there's also one last side to this. Uh, press G, and say you want to move it along like X and Y at the same time, but not actually move it up or down. Now you can actually do this. Press G 
activate grab, but instead of pressing just an axis letter like X, Y, or Z, press shift, like say you're, you don't want to move it along the Z axis, press shift Z to lock the, the Z axis. So now you're currently just moving it along the X and Y. And you can do that with shift X, and now you're only moving it along Z and Y, then shift Y for X and Z, and it really just gives you a lot more control over how you want to move it. So three functions, G for plain old grab, or actually four functions, uh, axis letter for global axes, uh, double axis letter for local axes, and G plus shift axis to lock a certain axis. So next on our list is rotate. Now most of the same functions apply to rotate, such as plain old rotate, uh, axis rotation, and local axis rotation. However, you cannot lock an axis while rotating. I just tried it and you can't do it. It just seems to take the axis you locked and just rotate it along that one. So it seems to work as the opposite of what it's supposed to do. So we'll just forget it. So we'll start with the uh, basic rotate. Rotate is activated by R. So immediately your mouse turns into this dotted line with these two arrows at the end just to signify that you are rotating. So you can just turn the cube around pretty much any way you want. Uh, same controls apply to rotate as grab. R, X will rotate along the X axis, Y for Y, and Z for Z. And if you rotate it this way, R, X, X will rot rotate it along the local X axis, Y, Y will do the same, Z, Z will do the same. But there's also another uh, way to rotate, but it's it's not something that I've used very often. I have used it, but not often enough to say that I really know how it works. But uh, if you press R twice, R, and then R again, you activate trackball rotation. Now, trackball rotation pretty much tracks where your mouse is, and depending on where you place it, it just places the cube relative to that. It's a bit easier to see with a Suzanne or a monkey. If you press R twice, she basically follows where your mouse is. Like, whoa, whoa. So you can pretty much have a lot of control over how to position her. Say you put her like this, then RZ. You can just use a combination of ordinary rotation and trackball rotation to get her place the way you want instead of messing around with the axes and stuff like that. So yep, that's rotation. Also if you want a clear rotation, this is something that also applies to uh, location which I forgot to mention. Uh, say you have your cube rotated like this and your cube over here and you want to put it right back at the center with no rotation. Well press Alt, Alternate, plus the uh, operator key, in this case it will be G, and this clears the location, so it takes the object center, which is this orange dot here, and positions it right at the center of this grid, which is 0, 0, 0. And Alt-R basically clears all these rotation values that you can find in the uh, N panel, which I can't remember what it's called, I think it's some sort of properties panel, but if you press Alt-R, these rotation values immediately reset to zero. And you can also do this with scale, which I'll demonstrate later. So next is scale. Now, scale is not in relation to a lizard or a dragon or anything to weigh yourself. It's scale as in proportion, as in size. So if you activate scale using S, you basically have the same controls as uh, grab. You can scale along the x-axis, you can scale along the y-axis, the z-axis, plain old scale for universal. Uh, if you rotate it around, scale along the local x-axis, the local y-axis, the local z. And also, you can scale by locking axes. 